Hey everyone and welcome back to the news where we certainly have got a, a fun story. The ensuing shit show from NVIDIA's new wave of graphics cards. They've been forced to unlaunch a graphics card, which certainly if you're an add-in board partner, must have been a real pain in the ass. Now, of course, the GTX 4090 is out. You've probably seen the reviews. It is a story stunningly powerful machine to the point where honestly it probably has so much power that your monitor is not even good enough to make use of it it is absolutely wild so look if you want easy 4k 120 fps it's obviously going to do that probably with everything maxed and it would have to because it's uh well 1649 pounds slash 1500 dollars do you want to do cyberpunk 2077 120 plus fps with ray tracing on that is a reality now and that honestly is a pretty damn impressive thing but yes as digital foundry pointed out most pcs won't even be able to take advantage of this i mean there's even the sheer size of the card it may not fit in your case and uh, also even like your cpu that might be the bottleneck power draw going to be pretty humongous i mean honestly the whole pc space is getting pretty damn power hungry now uh, yeah, so that's basically it. I mean, so many games that Digital Foundry have been benchmarking are hitting CPU uh, limitations even at 4K maxed, which means the CPU is holding it back, so you're not actually really making good on the on the 4090. They even say there's a good chance it simply offers too much performance. Of course, that's for the games of today. This certainly is a card that will last people long into the future, but I wouldn't really recommend buying something as a, you know, future-proofing sort of thing because, like, in a few generations, this level of performance will probably be available from, a, you know, a significantly cheaper card that, of course, will also uh, benefit from actual platform improvements. So, yeah, you can probably wait. Don't worry. Now, 66% of the Steam audience are actually using 1080p monitors. Now, that said, that's the overall for Steam. So I want to know, what resolution are you using? Let us know in the comments down below. Seriously, just, even if it's just the numbers, put them in the comments below. I really want to know because I have a feeling that uh, you guys will probably be at a higher resolution than the worldwide average just because of the uh, the clustering of uh, our viewership, which is basically uh, North America and uh, and. and, and Western Europe. I think Australia too. Quite a lot of you Aussies. So there you go. That's the situation. This is absolutely an incredible enthusiast product that uh, you almost certainly don't need. But the problem really with this range, because nobody's that worried about a Halo product. You pretty much know it's not for you. A Halo product is just, you know, it's the super sexy car at the top of the range that makes the whole thing look a bit more cool. Makes it look like it's got some heritage, legacy, pizzazz. Well, the thing is, NVIDIA tried to really pull a fast one on people. So, the they said, the RTX 4080 12GB is a fantastic graphics card, but it's not named right. Having two GPUs with a 4080 designation is confusing, so we're pressing the unlaunch button. The 4080 16GB is amazing and on track to delight gamers everywhere November 16th. And they're just talking about the reception being strong. Of course, they're going to frame this in a way that's very good for them. Now, why have they done this? Why Why did... Uh, dear viewer, please riddle me this. <laughs> if, uh, if having two GPUs with a 4080 designation is confusing, then why did they do it? Well, you see, one of these cards in normal times would probably have been called uh, the 4070. There's a bit of a difference, though. Uh... 4070 would not have an RRP of $900. I actually think that they're in a situation where they have more power than they know what to do, uh, know what to do with. So they're basically just trying to salami slice their, uh, you know, their their products. And the way that they'll do this is they will always launch things. You know, they always would do this, right? You'd get the the 90, the 80, whatever. The best cards would come out first. Uh, so we are seeing that happen, but this time it's just happening at a higher and higher price point. And the thing about the 4080 is it wasn't just a change in RAM, right? The 12 gigabyte version was actually significantly less powerful. Now, it was still very powerful and anyone would be happy with the amount of power that it produces. But yeah, it is absolutely not what a consumer would expect, which obviously just would have been 
more VRAM. It was not that. So basically, they got called out on their obvious bullshit. And rather shockingly, this has happened to the the like the degree where they've actually had to make a massive change. This is going to cost them millions of dollars. Now you might be wondering what the hell's going to happen with all of the 4080 12 gigabytes. Who knows? Uh, they could launch it as a 4070 Ti at some point in the future, right? They could maybe just do that. Um, now, an unintended uh, consequence here is that for those who were willing to pay, uh, you know, $899 for this card, you can't do that anymore because the card has been pulled. That does actually mean that it is $1,200. That's like four times the cost of a modern console. $1,200 to get in on the entry currently of this new uh, series of cards. And, you know, obviously, NVIDIA will want to go as slowly as possible because the idea of having the FOMO, right, seeing all the, the tech YouTubers and the, you know, rich friends have these crazy cards and the game streamers having these crazy cards, uh, you know, people are going to want to, you know, kind of cough up and purchase. There's also apparently an interesting issue with uh, a whole bunch of crypto changes, basically just meaning the GPU demand has kind of gone down a bit. People predicting the market's going to be flooded with, uh, you know, a bunch of previous series cards. Um, which is an interesting thing. Prices in the UK don't seem to reflect that, but perhaps they are in the US. But anyway, for the add-in board partners, they must be miffed about this, but NVIDIA have said that they will be reimbursing the, uh, you know, the repackaging costs. Now, as Video Cards has pointed out, it is unclear if they'll be paying for the labor costs of unpacking existing cards or only reimbursing for like the actual, you know, marketing assets and stuff like that. So yeah, angry partners consumers that are a bit pissed off but undoubtedly my god absolute incredible engineering is at that company it's an interesting situation certainly evga must be having a bit of a laugh evga basically just said that from from their perspective nvidia was such a ball ache to work with that they just couldn't be fucked anymore that's in between the lines that's what they said so fairly interesting then yeah kind of rough. Um, hopefully, they will actually uh, repay the labor costs as well, because, I mean, this is quite a lot. But just the idea, you know, that it's uh, the repacking costs, that does suggest to me that, like, look, these cards have been manufactured, surely. They'll be lying around. So, NVIDIA's got a plan to do something with them. I imagine it's a plan that uh, the add board partners probably know about and are NDA'd about. That said, if what AVGA has said, maybe they don't know and they're just in limbo, because apparently that would be a pretty damn NVIDIA move to make. Now, as for what this means for you, well, fairly interesting actually in the overall space. And I do want to pull in some info here just about the Series S too, and just the general state of uh, graphics and game performance, right? So look, at the top level, consoles are so unbelievably trounced. It's not even funny. And uh, while NVIDIA, at least per the uh, LTT video I watched uh, pretty recently, uh, apparently Intel have actually taken back the crown from, uh, from AMD. But I think the point is that like generation to generation, both Intel and AMD are on fire. In some cases, almost literally, because I think some of the thermals are kicking up a bit. Uh, I mean, th th they are, so there's that. But on both the CPU and GPU level, PC gaming is just unbelievable. Uh, right now. Of course, consoles still do have a few things that are helpful for them, right? You can squeeze more out of consoles because you're just targeting one SKU, basically. But even while we've got some current teams uh, like the Plague, uh, Plague Tale Requiem and uh, Gotham Knights uh, bunch actually finding themselves struggling to balance the new generation demands of, you know, fidelity versus performance, we do have a kind of interesting thing here because the Series S is the bottom line SKU the developers are working on or perhaps trying to get around. So this is uh, just a quick Twitter thread from, uh, from Ian McClure. So Ian is a visual effects artist at Bossa Studios, and this was him responding to, of course, uh, legendary game journalist Jeff Gersman. It might sound broken, but the reason you are hearing it a lot right now is because many developers have been sitting in meetings for the past year desperately trying to get Series S launch requirements dropped. If you're not aware, you need to launch in Series X. You cannot, or S, you cannot launch on X only. You must launch on S as well. 
Studios have been through one development cycle where Series S turned out to be an albatross around the neck of production, and now that games are firmly being developed with new consoles in mind, uh, teams don't want to repeat the process. So basically here, no matter what, your game has got to scale back to being good in the Series S. That's that. And uh, for a lot of developers, this is a fairly frustrating, uh, a fairly frustrating thing. Uh, you know, when the new consoles come out, generally there's a little period of time where they're either a better priced to performance than PC or they're like just a little bit below. I think some of the worries that people will have here, though, is that perhaps relatively speaking, the Series S is just a little bit lower. Again, not really a worry for games of right now, though certainly a worry for some games of right now. I mean, it took two years for Cyberpunk to get its, uh, you know, happy uh, Series S patch. Um, but I think the worry is, you know, in five or six years time, maybe four years time, right, when the Series S is truly showing its age, when more people have got 4K TVs, right? When maybe the standard television that people buy is going to be 4K, you could have a situation or you know, maybe they're able to bring the Series X's price down a little bit, but perhaps with the S existing, they won't want to do that. Uh, but basically the point is the Series S made more and more sense towards the start of this generation where the additional headroom afforded by the Series X wasn't necessarily needed, especially since so many games are across generations anyway. But I think we're going to hit an issue, right? In a few years time, where most people are going to be on 4K, right? Uh, or at least more people are going to be. You're going to have games that are designed in a world where, look, maybe a GTX 6090 exists, and if this is what a 4090 does, can you imagine what a 6090 does? There's an obvious joke there. I won't make it, but, you know, leave your best one in the comments down below, I guess. So all of this is going to be a very interesting looming problem. And it is quite funny. The game that will eternally never come out, but one that I still do enjoy a lot of the time when I play it, uh, Star Citizen. I remember them talking about, you know, having utterly unbeatable, you know, performance, or not performance, <laughs> definitely not, but graphics. Um, it's funny the game's actually taking so long to develop that, uh, yeah, I, I wonder. Although, to be honest, it does actually look pretty damn stunning when I hop in and play it from time to time. But I guess the point here is basically the Series S can hold us back, and uh, as time goes on, mid-range PC cards are going to be absolutely fucking insane in terms of their level of power. I think for me, the big question exists though, is uh, will we get 750 Ti, 1050 Ti? Like, will we get that kind of like incredible value powered card? Or do we think there's actually a position where in the market, NVIDIA won't want to do that because frankly, they don't feel like they need to given they have a dominant position. I, I do wonder um, on that one. But yes, PC is the platform that benefits from new technology. And this is something that is not just limited to GPUs. One of the largest things about this new generation of consoles was the absolutely incredible loading times. And if you've not played one of these new consoles, at least in the games that are kind of well built around it, it truly is next gen feeling, right? Because, you know, there's next gen, oh, it's a higher resolution. Oh, the lighting's a bit better. Then there's next gen as in, holy shit, this feels different. In the same way that like World of Warcraft when it first came out had this massive world with no loading screens and to people that was just like, oh shit, wow. Well, actually, the uh, direct storage API, uh, which is one of the awesome things about the Series X that is allowing its super fast, uh, you know, loading uh, time. That's actually something that, uh, you know, earlier this year, was uh, bumped back to Windows 10. Kind of surprised they didn't bundle that in with Windows 11. Just remember they used to do that for DirectX? I mean, they sort of technically still do. Now, it's going to be a while before you see broad adoption of this, but funny enough, uh, Forspoken, it is going to be using it. But of course, Forspoken itself was delayed, meaning it will be a little bit longer till us PC gamers actually get uh, to experience this pretty damn cool uh, new technology. So there you go, direct storage 1.1, pretty damn awesome. And uh, as always, the usual generational story is playing out. Just that we honestly are in a very interesting uh, economy right now, aren't we? Uh, we're seeing, you know, more and more expensive products catching on. And I think as income inequality across the world, uh, you know, gets more and more rapid, because funny enough, like take the example of the UK, when the British government basically uh, you know, distributes 450 billion almost exclusively to the ultra rich. Um, 
it has some very interesting effects. Uh, I think one of them is that, uh, you know, those sort of normal people of us are going to see these like mega, mega expensive things and maybe feel a bit more alienated, right? That's the sort of thing that maybe emotionally makes you like feel the sort of income equality thing that's going on. Um, but I, I just wonder what it's what it's going to do. It seems like a lot of companies are kind of like upping their prices to just see how far they can push it. Because perhaps it turns out that the world is massive. The population is literally just humongous. And uh, perhaps they are in a case where they can have these massively high markup, extremely expensive items and sell out. And I guess there's a bit of a worry that if that happens too much, that uh, they won't really feel like they have to make uh, the card that is brilliant for everybody, like the 750 Ti, like the 1050 Ti. I think less of the 1050, it was really the 750 Ti that was just an absolute champion of a card. Now, of course, we are getting some nice trickle-down effects, right? Like, as an example, you do have the new uh, frame generation uh, base DLSS-like thing, though there is something unfortunate about that noticeable input lag which honestly to me is a big killer, even though the performance gains from it are kind of insane. And also in typical NVIDIA fashion, it's something that they build as only being available on the new generation of cards, which is pretty damn funny because people kind of worked out that it actually does, uh, you know, it does run in the previous generation of cards. So honestly, NVIDIA are NVIDIA, man. They have incredible technology, amazing engineers. They ship incredible cards, but pretty damn aggressive and that rubs a lot of people the wrong way and now they've got egg in their face i mean hey they tried to buy arm i mean this runs an arm right this is a a14 i think this this runs an arm right this is a an m1 max uh, macbook it runs an arm uh, arm uh, is basically like if it's not a you know if it's not an x86 uh, cpu um, like you have an ARM device. There's probably an ARM device in your microwave. Uh, ARM basically like licenses uh, their their stuff, uh, you know, so as an example, to Apple, who then make Apple Silicon, um, to Qualcomm, who then make the Snapdragon processor that, uh, or, you know, Samsung for the Exynos processor that probably is in your phone. And I think it's just a perfect encapsulation of NVIDIA's like uber aggressive, uh, you know, positioning in the market. I mean, their stock was doing incredibly. I think that was backed on a lot of AI stuff, a lot of like, you know, sort of uh, car stuff too. Um, but it was, it was fascinating. They tried to buy ARM. And can you imagine if NVIDIA owned ARM? Like, I mean, a bit of that would be hilarious uh, because of the Apple connection. NVIDIA and Apple had a fairly famous and humongous falling out. Like a massive fall like out. They fucking hate each other. So the idea that NVIDIA could have ended up owning ARM, therefore they would have been profiting off the Apple devices. I imagine that would have made people at Apple turn absolutely crimson and get furious. But uh, of course, that was blocked on anti-competitive grounds. And that does actually mean that for as much as they have these amazing engineers making these, you know, GTX 4090s that are giving us our cyberpunk 4K, probably 160 FPS with, um, you know, incredible ray tracing. I mean, if it is using the DLSS uh, 3 stuff, then I mean, how much of that is it actually rendering? Because it's, you know, the frame generation, machine learning based stuff that adds a bunch of input lag. But, uh, you know, as much as they do this really cool shit, they rub their partners the wrong way. Somebody on the WAN show, which is the, uh, like the podcast live show that uh, Luke and Linus from LTT do. Um, one of their people, uh, I think it was Linus basically commented like, all right, but EVGA, you know, that's just them. What about Asus? Like they're a big company that do NVIDIA cards, surely they'd be treated better as a large company. And uh, between the lines, Linus pretty much said, nope, NVIDIA is a dick to everybody and no one likes them. Kind of funny then that the acquisition, the massive acquisition that they tried to do was blocked because it was anti-competitive. And I suppose as much as we can celebrate this amazing new technology that's entering the marketplace, you do have to think they try to do something that literally legally is anti-competitive in that acquisition. They kind of acted like a pack of dicks with this. Yeah, they had to unlaunch the card, but if they felt like they could have got away with it, they would have. So ultimately for me, that means we head over to uh, Team AMD with uh, Dr. Lisa Sue and all of her people. I uh, very much hope that AMD Radeon GPUs 
are able to catch up somehow. But it's hard to see because certainly by market share, NVIDIA dominates. Dominates. It's a pretty good word for their ammo, isn't it? Okay, that's it for me. Now you've been filled in on the situation with NVIDIA. Hope you found it interesting. Again, let me know, what is your screen resolution for gaming? With that, thanks for watching. Uh, I will see you later. And if you want to check out the video game that uh, we are developing, I believe the demo will be up when this video is up. You can check out The Pale Beyond over on Steam. Have a great day. See you next time.